Is every FX trade a carry trade? Welcome to Numeric's video blog. I'm your host, Jim Jocko. Joining me today is FX specialist Udi Sella. Udi, how are you? Thank you. Very well. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. Um, I want to sit back uh, in recent news on September 6th. Uh, currency specialist and global head of G10 FX strategy at Citi, uh, Stephen Englander, recently argued that, quote, every major FX trade in place right now is really a carry trade, one form or another, differing only in scope and the risk it entails. So, in your experience, well, first of all, why don't you give us a little background as a, a relates to the carry trade and the strategy that investors would utilize that, but then really, you know, what does this statement mean exactly? And do you agree with Mr. Uh, Englander? Yeah, uh, definitely. So um, in terms of carry trade, basically the idea is that uh, you purchase a currency which, has a, which offers a higher uh, yield and you sell the other currency which actually you know, trades at a lower yield. And what Steve Englander is trying to say, and I actually had the pleasure of meeting him, and working with it is that um, uh, we have now uh, basically two types of uh, economies in terms of economic cycle. So we have uh, uh, economies that are, seem to be getting out of the woods with, uh, uh, with growth and uh, economies that really are just, you know, still fighting the deflation and trying to, 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 to take uh, extreme measures. So when I'm mentioning measures and cycles, let's have a look at the US economy, where the QE has been on for a while, and now just this week, uh, again, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank has announced that they will uh, reduce further the purchases uh, and basically, you know, tapering as opposed, for instance, to the, to the European Central Bank, which really announced a very aggressive plan this July. And similarly, uh, in Japan, and we've discussed that over uh, previous uh, video blogs, Japan applying, again, uh, the abenomics, which basically also is a lot about uh, um, quantitative easing. And we've seen dramatic moves in, in the foreign exchange market as, uh, as a result. So when we started discussing uh, Japan, the dollar yen traded at 76 yen uh, to a dollar, and today we are almost at 110. We're looking at one, uh, 108.70. Similarly, the, the, the euro is weakened uh, against the dollar from levels of 140 a few weeks ago now to 128.50. So this is basically what Steve Englander is uh, referring to. So specifically, and, and, and we're seeing, uh, you know, the, the fixed income markets and bond markets react uh, to uh, this change in uh, Fed policy and uh, uh, European policy as well as it relates to, to rates. Uh, but more specifically on the FX side, there, there are four particular trade types that, that we're hearing uh, regarding from traders that are very typical right now. Perhaps you can give us a little bit more insight as to uh, what those trades are looking like. Yeah, so if we back, if we again we refer to this uh, review by... Uh, Mr. Englander, uh, he's looking at a few markets. So one thing is what he calls the G3, or what the market calls G3, which is typically uh, dollar, euro, and yen. And uh, in the, uh, within the G3, he's looking at uh, weakening of the euro, weakening of the yen, uh, and the strengthening of the dollar. He's not mentioning it, but uh, if we look at the economic uh, uh, cycles, basically the sterling, uh, is now that we are we have uh, the, Scot the Scotland referendum behind us since this morning, uh, the standing is much more uh, in line with uh, with the dollar as opposed to the euro and the yen. And even if you look at the ten-year ye yields, government uh, bond yields, so you see that the gilt trades may be ten basis points below the, the dollar, so two sixty and two fifty, as opposed to yen, which is the ten-year uh, uh, JGB trades at uh, fifty fifty-five basis points and euros to make an average. So if Germany is like at 110, France is 140 just to get a... Okay, so that's that's one type of a trade. The second one is looking at uh, China, and pretty much uh, he's saying that uh, the overall um, um, Asian market, in terms of the trading community, the FX trading community is positioned uh, uh, short dollar and buying the Yuan, because again, the Yuan is perceived to be overvalued. So he's pretty much uh, um, in line with this position. And he's also looking at what he calls the uh, relative volatility index. He's looking at the interest rate differential and defining it by the implied volatility. And he says when the, the ratio is above one, it's a clear trade. 
So that's one of the ways he's looking at it. If, if you think of it, it makes a lot of sense because if you have a big uh, interest rate differential, basically it means that the, the, the market has to move dramatically in order to catch up. So that's the way it looks. So look for, another question for you, Rudy. You know, in terms of uh, unrest in the Middle East, I mean, obviously Scotland is now behind us as of, of today. Um, you know, what is the implications or impact on the market now with, with the rise of ISIS or ISIL, depending on um, uh, which uh, agency you're talking to? So people, that, that's, a, that's an interesting question. When people want to trade uh, the Middle East, so and they look at the, the FX uh, market, they look at uh, the Saudi the, and the, typically the, uh, and the Jordanian dinar, because these are, of, of course, uh, countries that have uh, uh, the border with, uh, with Iraq, right? And because these markets are not very liquid, they, they tend to trade uh, forwards. In, some, in many cases, those forwards are... Uh, actually NDF contracts, so uh, non-deliverable forwards. So basically it's just like a cash settle deal. And when, when, when the market uh, is looking for a, a, a big move, or, or if you like a depreciation of the local currencies, this is what happens when there's a lot of the tents in the market, like uh, uh, during the, the war in Iraq and so forth. So uh, foreign investors, foreign bankers will buy the dollar against, let's, let's say the Jordanian dinar or, or the Saudi real. And you would see the forward points explode, and when everything settles down, the forward points go back. And basically, it can imply, in a sense, uh, negative yields for the dollar. So one final question for you. You know, uh, clearly there's a time horizon as it relates to quantitative easing. And I'm coming back to our, our original topic as it relates to carry trades. Um, what is the window here? Um, you know, what is, how long is this going to... Uh, kind of be the case into the market, and uh, you know, are, are we talking about six months, or do we? They're thinking a little bit more of a longer term. Well, clearly, there's a lot of uncertainty, so it's a bit difficult to predict the timelines. I would say it's much more than six months because if we think of uh, the different measures that the Fed has taken since 2000, since the Lehman crisis, actually, we're looking at the cycle of at least uh, five years, and we want to mention that. Uh, it, uh, the, the U.S. banks have also cleaned their balance sheets, which hasn't been the case in, in Europe so far. And only, you know, that uh, one of the measures that uh, ECB has uh, announced was, uh, again, a, a loan facility. It was just uh, published today that I think banks took only something like 86 uh, billion out of 1 trillion. So basically it shows that the banks don't really have in people that want to, to, to invest and, and to borrow money. And banks don't want to take money just for the sake of uh, buying government bonds because now the yields are so low, so there's not much upside. And if you just place the money at the at a central bank, you get actually a negative return. So that's kind of a deflationary cycle, which is basically indicating, in my uh, opinion, that there is a, still a long way to go. So I think we're looking at least in a year or two. Well, Udi, uh, if it's a long way to go, then we're going to have a lot to talk about in the upcoming months. So I want to thank you again for uh, joining us for today's video blog. Um, please follow us along on Twitter at NX Analytics or on our blog on numerics.com. Of course, we want to talk about the topics that you want to hear about. So any feedback, please feel free to share with us. And uh, Udi, we'll uh, see you next time on the blog. Thank you very much, Jim, for having me. Thank you.